All right, guys, we're done. Just finished the tournament on a positive note. Yes. Uh, Eugene, you drew. I drew Alejandro. Alejandro, a very strong American grandmaster. Right. Everyone, everyone is aware of who he yeah. is. Needs no introduction. <laughs> and uh, I beat a lower-rated player, um, but that was important because I was able to. Uh, tie for the under 2400 price. Nice, congrats. Thanks. And uh, right now we're actually waiting for the closing ceremony. And um, there's one game that's still going on and Liano is trying to hold a draw shunt game 138 moves now. Right. <laughs> we're expecting that one so, to be done soon. I hope he draws that means I get to tie for fourth. Yeah, so you'll be you'll be tying for fourth behind Adivan. Yep. Mustafa yep. Yelmaz and Lagarde. And Lagarde. And both and you, of these guys I played. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> and you I have lost to both feel, of them. You have to feel really good. Yes. Um, awesome. Means your tiebreak should be good as well, although I don't know what tiebreak yeah, is. Yeah, I have no idea, but hopefully. <laughs> okay, well, my game was was pretty smooth. He uh, he played the English, and I went for the um, most flexible Kings Indian setup. Yep. Um, and then after he played e4, I, I C5. took a chance. Yep. Yeah. And uh, this is the opening that I recommend, guys, in my black book. This is the kind of the dragon formation. Right. And because of the d4 outpost, black is supposed to be f supposed to be fine here. Yeah, I mean, white, it's not even in time to get the Marazzi, right? Because we just... Knight c6. Yeah. And that's, yeah, this is just bad. And there's no d4. Yep. So he played uh, g3. And um, this is called the Botvinnik English for those of you who follow theory. That's right. And instead of the move c6, I should mention that bishop g4 is a move that I played a while back and I actually made a video. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is to try to, because you're going for the d4 outpost after h3, to take on e2, knight takes or queen takes, doesn't matter, probably knight takes. Mm -hmm. And then, yep, and now this is cool plan knight f6, castles. A knight d7, d3, knight of fate. Mm -hmm. So you save a tempo, and that's where the knight is hitting. So it's important to remember this. So maneuver. knight comes to e6, so yep. this should be 3, knight e6. Knight e6, yep. Then just plant this guy here. And you have nothing to worry about, black lord equalized, and then you just fight for the dark squares. Yeah, that makes sense. Just trade everything off, get this knight against that bishop on yep. g2. Yeah, I, actually, I didn't know about this line. Um, but obviously e6 is still fine. Yeah, I, I kind of went for the simple setup. Just control the d5 square yeah, so you can't be bad. plant this yeah. knight, and then I'll have d4. So things went pretty smoothly. To me, this just reminds me of like close yeah, to Yeah, and I think here. bishop e3 is already uh, a mistake. I think the right move is either a3 or h3. Right. And uh, you don't want to commit the bishop to e3 because if knight d4, now he wants to take. Pawn takes a knight e2, and now... So he can't do this if the bishop is Now the bishop, yeah, is not going to get hit, and now he can play on both wings with f4 or b4. Right, so this seems normal, knight c6. But I wouldn't play knight d4 four. if I were you. Right. I would play a6. I should wait. Yep, and if he plays rook b1, just play rook b8. Mm -hmm. And something like that. And b4, you can take take and just play b5. Yeah, that seems pretty typical. Um, Okay, now it's a double edge position. He can take, he can play for d4. You know, you have your own trumps. Right. Uh, or you can just play, if you go back uh, after rook b1, yeah, you can just play a5 if you don't want to deal with any of this. But then knight d5 oh. is allowed. So I could, I could yeah, play a5 it, um, after a3, right? Yeah. Or maybe like bishop d7. Actually. See what he does. And then a5? Not sure if the bishop is well placed in d7. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe h6, just a useful move. Right, just figure out something. Now when he's ready to play b4, and then a5, just yeah. shut him down. Yeah, yeah I don't mind giving And then you can just play score. b6, bishop b7, and right. then like play for a5 later in the game. Yeah, I mean, looks looks fine for black as well. But yeah, he played it kind of too straightforward, and uh, believe it or not, guys, you gotta uh, know that trade of darks for bishop actually favors black in this position. Oh, I see. So, yeah, I think there's like a local player in SoCal who always goes for the setup bishop right. b3 queen d2 yeah. so it's just basic. like <laughs> very familiar but yeah it's not that effective here um i went for the b5 break yeah that's the right idea so bishop h6 uh knight comes mm -hmm. in he trades he plays f4 and uh, i play queen a5 reasonable move yeah yeah the idea just to support b5 and i can also trade here and then you'll have to take with the queen and i can come in with the with second, the second knight. knight and b5 is coming yep uh, so he played rook a d1, mm -hmm. which makes sense. And then I just played here. Yep. Um, just to be developed. Mm -hmm. Queen e3. And then here I decided to take because he, he just moved the queen. Right. Now he can't take with a knight because a2 pawn is That's what I figured. Right. <laughs> and then he surprised me. 
Um, yeah, I was expecting queen takes. Knight d4 and b5 and blacks a little bit better. Right, but I actually wasn't sure which piece to take with here. Bishop, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the knight is a monster, guys. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I thought if bishop takes... Um, I was a little bit worried about maybe e5. I'm going to always play d5. And then maybe this f5 break. I wasn't 100%. Oh, in this position. Uh-huh. Because if knight takes, queen takes c5 is important. Yeah. But even there, um, you have queen b6, and you're probably better. Just trade oh, queen yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you get a good knight against the bad bishop. Yeah, I mean, this is like dream French. Right. Um, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I wasn't sure. I was just going to decide once yeah. we got here. Um, but then he really shocked me by taking with the knight. All right, take on a2. I think he's going to kind of go yeah. all out here. And Sack the whole uh, <laughs> queen so set. this was my tribute to the uh, Pittsburgh pawn grabbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They, they uh, rest in peace for the 2018 season. I wasn't sure what his idea is. I mean, I thought maybe f5, which is what he played, but mm -hmm. I calculated and it looks dangerous, but I, not dangerous enough. Yeah, you can also play king h8, rook g8. Yeah, so yeah. I, I took the second pawn, and then he actually, he looked very confused. He right. thought he was just like, like mating. Just mate, yeah, queen h4, rook f4, and just resent. So I think this is what he missed, rook f4. Yeah, can you guys find the defense here? This is a very important moment. Right, now of course you would have to see this move ahead of time, right? Otherwise black is just right. lost. Yeah, the big threat is queen takes h7 and rook h4 is mid. Right. So what do you guys think? Well, g5. Yeah. That's I think it's a pretty simple move to see once and you're just noticing. Yeah. yeah, rook yeah, yeah. comes to g6 and it's game over. So he has one nice line with e5. He can try this with idea bishop e4. Mm -hmm. But I just throw you can in rook insert g6. rook g6 and take the pawn. Yeah, yeah. game over. Yeah, we'll take the rook. Mm -hmm. um, I was also, I mean, taking the knight is not stupid either. But rook h4 now. Uh, because I can, let's say, take. Ah, and queen h5 when you sack the queen, yeah, and you're like probably winning. So yeah. much material. <laughs> um, but not necessarily. But yeah, not necessary. G5. Um, so he played knight f4, which I thought was probably the best try. I think e5 was also a try. Mm -hmm. um, but I think here I just take with the queen. Um, yeah, I like queen so that you're hitting f6 pawn and the knight. Right, I can probably take the knight as well. But I do have to be... Yeah, I'm in time here because rook f4 just taking queen h5. Yeah, so I, I think I can just take yeah. the knight. Okay, so you play knight f4. I took the third pawn. <laughs> and now if knight h5, it's important that I have a check. And then knight's... Yeah. I nice take the knight, he takes here rook g7, everything's yeah. covered, and white loses. Um, he played d4, I think only move really. And I'm not sure, I didn't really feel like calculating this one, like here. Mm -hmm. You know, this reminded me of your game yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't allow any meat in this. <laughs> Why would I go for this, right? Yeah. When you so, have so much material, guys, you want to simplify. That's the golden rule. That, and that's why I trade. And yeah. Actually, I give back two pawns here. Queen g7. Yep, there goes one pawn. And he takes on c5, and I can't take he can't back. take back. bishop yeah. is hanging. So you gotta play knight e5, and then goes the second pawn, but his position is collapsing. Yeah, so I saw that I get my beautiful knight on e5, right. and even if I'm not up a pawn, I think black just has an amazing position. Yeah. If he takes this way... The c-pawn falls, and then you got two connected passes. Yeah, even rook fc8 there. Um, so he played on? He took with the rook, and then... <laughs> I don't know, I felt like yeah, there's just no chances off. here. No, no chance. So I was able to round up the pawns and uh, win the game. If you want to see uh, my endgame technique, a little twist for you guys, you're going to have to check out my Patreon page where I'm posting all my games with full detailed annotations. Nice. So yeah, I felt good about last round win, pretty smooth. And uh, let's see your game. Sure. So I'm playing a very strong player, Alejandro Ramirez. He is originally from Costa Rica, and I remember first time playing against him i think he was like 14 or 15 years old mm -hmm. and he was the youngest grandmaster from uh from south america uh yeah maybe central america or central america maybe yeah and then uh yeah i actually lost the game in the berlin end game <laughs> he like grinding me down so he is a very strong end game player oh yeah um even you know back then when he was you know 14 or how old he was mm -hmm. uh 2000 and I don't remember, 2003, I think. Three, maybe, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at this game. So he plays d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6. And here I'm following my black book repertoire, g3, 
And if you don't know the book, you should go to my website, chessopeningsexplained.com, where you can download the full copy and watch my videos. And the move here is very important, move b5. Mm -hmm. Because notice that if white plays uh, this move c4, that allows the bogo that not a lot of people, for instance, wants to allow. Or I can play d5 too, but the bogo is in addition to the uh, Queen's Indian. Right. The bogo is the main line in our book. So he tries to be sneaky to avoid the bogo, but now b5, and now it's not so easy for him to play c4. Mm -hmm. And after this, this, castles, I play knight a6. And the reason why knight is well placed here is if he tries to undermine my pawn, I'm always gonna do this and this. Oh wow. And everything is protected. And like his center easy. is, you know, he does have control over the center. e4 is very important square that it's under control. This knight kind of was um, stuck there. c3 and a3 square are unavailable. d2 is going to block the bishop. So it's already quite difficult to um, to see what's going on. So if you want to learn more about this line, guys, I think this gives black excellent play. Please check out my website, chessopeningsexplained.com. He played the move c3, which I think is kind of... Um, well, harmless, mm -hmm. because I don't I don't really see the point why. So I play c5, bishop g5, I simply uh, break the pin, castles, a3. So now I think I understood his idea. He wants to shut my knight out of the game with this move b4. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a little too slow, because I'm going to get the bishop pair in the meantime, and just simply play d6. Mm -hmm. So I think I equalized more or less comfortably here. I played all the natural moves, takes, takes, rook c8. And I like my next move, also knight b8. You want to improve your worst piece when you don't know what to do. Here, I didn't quite know what to do. I mean, I could trade all the rooks off, but why? Let him take first and not surrender the file. Right. So I just did this. And now after that move, I don't like my next move. It's not a mistake yet, but it starts on a sequence where I have to kind of be accurate. Mm -hmm. I played bishop e4. I think the right move is just simply a6. Mm -hmm. And if he plays knight here, okay, I can just play either bishop e4, bishop d5, or even bishop a8. Right. Any of these moves are possible. And yeah, the knight's not that impressive. Yeah, I mean, five. I can just trade the knight off with knight c6 at some moment. Mm -hmm. So I could have done that, or maybe even more active square bishop e4. That's what I kind of saw during the game, and knight c6 is coming next. Right. Um, I guess I was slightly annoyed that he can do st stuff like that, but that shouldn't really matter because I'm going to tr trade the knight off. So just equal position. Yeah, it seems fine. Uh, but I played bishop e4. And now the idea is to meet this move with knight c6. That was my main idea. So, however, after bishop e4, he wins the tempo by playing knight f to d2, forcing the trade. Mm -hmm. I insert the check, but he actually doesn't mind the queen swap. And now, again, I have to play extra careful, and I should play this move a6 first. Not allowing this a3, a4 idea what happened in the game. Mm -hmm. Bonus protected now, because knight can go c6. So this was a big mistake. Knight d7, allowing, I completely overlooked this idea a4. For some reason I thought he may play knight a5 or or rook takes c8. And so all of a sudden your I bishop to, is ending up a little bit stuck here, right? Yeah, well I had an idea to open it up, but that's what happens to play takes, takes, and e5. Ah, I see. But uh, the sequence is actually not good for black. He just takes, takes, and just goes here. And now he's got the outside passer. And here I think he missed a chance. Both of us actually uh, thought that he has to take the pawn. Yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> but as the engine points out, chess is not checkers. You don't have to take. And there's a very strong move here. Knight e4? Wow. And surprisingly, this position is not so simple. So is the idea to take on d6 or to take on f6? The idea is to play f4. Oh, wow. And then take on uh, d6, and he's going to win a pawn. I don't remember the, how the line goes, but... Something something like that. Oh, and if here, I think this move. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? To just kick the knight back. So if d5... d5, I think now maybe he can take, take and take. fe3 and then e4. And then, yeah. yeah. So something like this could have happened, but... I mean... Yeah, it was such an engine too diff move. Yeah, it's diff di <laughs> too difficult to see for both of us. So he just took. Mm -hmm. And now I think with accurate play, I managed to hold things together. The key here, guys, is the knight on e5. It has a very nice outpost. So I just do this. Take. Takes, takes. Here. And now he's got, you know, his winning plan here, if there is one, is to trade the rooks. Because he's got the outside passer. Mm -hmm. So under no circumstance should I allow the rook trade. 
And the most important thing, guys, in the end game is what? Activity of the king. Right. So king g7, king g6. I don't mind the knight trade because rook and pawn endgame, I thought, is draw. Right. Just get easy counterplay. And I thought this was the most clever way to draw it. Sag the pawn. Activity of the king matters a lot. And if rook d3, I can just play rook takes b4. And if rook here, I can just play f5. Yeah. And e3 pawn is falling, and I got a strong passer. Just because I'm down a pawn, it doesn't really matter. Right. Because it's all about which pawn is queening first. Right. Yeah. And my, my king is way too active. Anyway, so um, I think he correctly plays uh, plays the smooth h3, trying to keep uh, the position a little bit more tense. Mm -hmm. So I play rook b8, trying to activate the rook. Check here, here, and here. And now it's very important that if he has this move, with the idea of rook here and mate, <laughs> I have to play a five, and this is the double f pawn is actually useful if he tries to protect. I can <laughs> nice. and now check, and I'm actually all well, doing well. Probably yeah. winning here, yeah, because now, well, at least I have a draw. If king d4, I have at least a draw. Right. Anyway, so he plays again correct move rook a5, trying to keep pressure. F5, check, check, and again you don't want to do this, guys, because. Uh, now he has good winning chances. Yeah, even knight d3 here going to king and pawn endgame. Yeah, the rule of uh, thumb is knight and pawn endgame is very similar to king and pawn endgame. Just because there is knights here, it doesn't mean black's position makes it any, any easier. So I correctly just uh, go king d7, knight d5, here, here. I activate my knight. Honestly, I'm not sure about knight c4. I think it's not a bad move, but I could have tried this or rook c8, mm -hmm. activated my rook. That's kind of what happened in the game. Because to play for a win, he tried this little trick. Mm -hmm. Because if I take, then now he forces the knight and pawn endgame. Right. And now I think he has pretty good winning chances. Yeah. He maybe just winning the five pawn and I'm just lost. Right. So I think I have to play this accurately. I activate my rook. And. Uh, yeah, so important to know which pieces you can trade and which you So can't. this is, you know, he could have already taken the perpetual, but he correctly tries to play on. And now I activate my rook again. And now he didn't like the activity and he offered me a draw with basically perpetual. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you got your active right. Um, but again, the key kind of lessons, guys, from this game is activity matters a lot in the end game. Active king, active rook, you know, whenever you see a situation like that, you just got to go for activity right away. Nice. All right. So this brings us to the end of the tournament. I hope you enjoyed our uh, recording of every round and uh, look forward to seeing everyone again. Uh, either online or on my website, chessopenexplain.com, or um, in chess tournaments. Yeah, I mean, again, if you guys like these videos, make sure to uh, leave us a comment, let us know so that we do this in future tournaments. Share them with your friends, and of course, you can always subscribe to our different channels uh, to stay in touch. So until next time, guys, take care.